baby gorgeous welcome to bravo and please where we're going to get lit off all the latest going on in the bravo tv world this is a safe and uncensored space to discuss our love for everything pop culture and 420 related so grab your can of goodies and let's get lit All right, we are live. We welcome to Bravo and Blaze with Jenny Blaze, and thank you all for being here today. We have way too much content to cover, so we're breaking up this week's episode to cover Scandaval. All this Scandaval coverage is just too much. We're doing, we're breaking it up. Today, I'm going to be sharing my screen on my iPhone. But I'll be scrolling through my Instagram stories. Uh-oh, here we go already. Um, because that's where I document everything, which you can go see in my Instagram story highlights. I'm hoping to get to the never before scenes from the finale. There were, I don't know if I missed one or if there's only three of them, but they were really short. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to go live and recap the uncensored, pumped up edition of the reunion part uno but before i begin make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be reminded to join in on the interactive chat i see you over there and see all the wonderful visuals for today's episode however if you are a podcast listener don't worry because all episodes are available on spotify Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. I actually added a few more platforms, so I don't even know. It should be on, like, all of them, though. And subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, and or leaving a five-star rating is incredibly appreciated and helps the show to continue to grow. Also, don't forget our social media handle is at Bravo and Blaze on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. I do post stuff there, but I'm not really that active, so... I don't know, uh, Instagram and Twitter are like my go-tos. But just as a reminder, this is for entertainment purposes only. This is not your source for facts. No, There's no fact checking going on. We're documenting. We're in this together, okay? We're all bonding through Scandaval, and I've been documenting it for us. Really, this is a collective effort because... As I walk through, you'll see we I get I grab the stories from all my favorite accounts, my friends. I see some of them joining. And I just but really I just want to, you know, make a reminder that this is even though we're frustrated, we may say things like poo poo head or worm with a mustache, you know, this is <laughs> just we do not condone any attacking on the Bravo Lebs, even though we don't like Tom Sandoval. And now I'm starting to really not like Tom Schwartz, but we'll get to that. Um, just know, you know, we're just here to express our opinions and connect with each other, kind of like group therapy. So no bullying, no attacking people trying to ruin their lives. It was a little funny to read the reviews on Yelp, but I I don't have much time to listen to other Bravo content creators podcasts, um, but I'm friends with them. And like Ryan Bailey, I see his stuff on my Instagram feed a lot, so I'll share his stories. But I guess he got, he reached out to Yelp about this situation and they have a protocol for it now. So we'll get to that as well. But also I wanna remind you all, don't forget about the merch. Oh, I might even just put this on. It's not as warm as I thought it was going to be. Usually I'm a sweaty bee, but I don't know. It's not that. Hold it. Ah, oh, there we go. This is so warm. Team Ariana. Yes, I'm reminding you of the merch because we got scan of all notebooks. This is where we're taking all our notes. Get your magnifying glasses. <gasps> oh, okay. And also, like, this is a cropped sweatshirt that I'm wearing. I think you can probably see it better on Instagram. I'm not doing a good job of modeling. I'm not really a model. Is this how you do it? <laughs> All 
All right, moving on. Also, I have an Amazon storefront and I've been collecting all of our necessities for Scandival in the Scandival survival kit. And if you've been following along in the IG stories, I've been using my red light therapy a lot and I know I'm not the only one. Some of you have it out there. I know it because it says shipped on it <laughs> and delivered. Okay, sign, sign seal delivered. But uh, I think it's working on my skin. Ariana did a picture like this this week when she fooled us. Um, but yes, I also added things like toilet paper, paper towels, pens, batteries, so that this does not happen to anyone else because I can't handle this. Sandoval has given me four menstrual cycles already. How is that even possible? It's not even like, hasn't even been three months. <laughs> Makes no sense. And I know I'm not the only one because, yeah, when you when we talk about it, we start to learn about other people we can relate. And then people start coming forward and I know I'm not the only one. So Luann's on the rag like all the time. Sorry, that was gross. <laughs> Okay, so yes, go check out the Scannable Survival Kit. We have um, replacement colors for nails because I, white was always my go-to color for my toes. I don't usually do my fingers because I'm a mom and like I'm always washing my hands so it's like pointless. But my toes, like Lisa Barlow, she gets her pedicures done like every day or something crazy like that. Love her. But uh, yeah, I added two new colors in there so that you guys um, can replace your white nail polish because we're triggered now. I can't believe he had the white nails at the reunion. Now we have to watch that for three full episodes. Plus, we have a bonus episode with extra footage, I guess. This is never ending, guys. I don't think Scandival is going to end. And I'm scared of BravoCon now because I think tickets are going to be coming out soon. But let's move forward. I get sidetracked. Sorry, guys. Okay. Don't, for don't forget to check out Patreon. I have um, diff many different tiers. And we are we're getting deeper with our trauma bonding on Patreon. So if, you, if that feels like something you need in your life, we're there. And we have a community there. So also, in addition to that, I'm showing behind the scenes on all the content creation, how we came from live tweeting during the pandemic with two new young kids under the age two and then two teenagers, okay? Anyone would go mental. And I just did it on camera for you guys, so you're welcome. But um, yes, go check out behind the scenes. Let's get to it. <clears throat> like I said, we're going to go through my Instagram stories on my phone. That's why you need to come over to YouTube to watch this if you're a podcast listener or you're on Instagram. Hold on, I got to switch this. Okay, we're starting from last week after last week's episode. And I'm just going to walk through it the way that I experienced it so you guys can see how chaotic it's been. I mean, this is a lot. And I would love to put it all together in a nice, presentable way. But it's like, it's never ending just coming at us. There's no time. <laughs> so hopefully, we'll see. All right, this is from Face Reality 16 on Instagram. And... I don't know, after the finale last week, I was feeling, you know, kind of like at ease. Like, this might be, I feel like it's coming to an end, but obviously the reunion is nuts. So, I guess the first slide here says there are rev revelations and they are, re and they are revelations that not all of them know now. So, does that mean... Because they talk about this sometimes and they were saying, because Lala, we'll see as we go through, Lala goes live after she watches it and it's like the day before we watch it, I think. So I don't know what that means, but 
here, let me read this. This is from Variety because Variety's been doing articles. There's like been, t I think they're doing like daily articles now on Vanderpump Rules because of Scandal. But it says in this clip, Baskin says the need for a delay became clear to him after they filmed the reunion because to move forward, the cast needs to see all three parts, the last of which airs on June 7th, which by the way, I'm going to be in New York City for the watch party. <laughs> so excited. The reunion is not just a recap of what you know, and it's not just an intense version of the emotions, he says. There is new information. Gasp? What? I'm not saying this as a mere tease, he adds. This is true. Infuriatingly, Baskin won't spoil what he means, even when pressed. I will put it this way. There are revelations, and they are revelations that not all of them know now, so we need a little space. Okay, don't forget, I think it's Pride weekend next weekend. We have a Memorial Day weekend and then Pride. And then the following week is the James Kennedy, Jax Taylor duo collaboration where I thought that would make the most sense for at least the first day of filming, right, for the next season. I don't know why they're not filming right now. Like, they should just be filming nonstop. But normally the seasons kick off with Shayna's birthday and Shayna's birthday was last month. Also, I have a new theory that just came to my mind. Maybe Coachella is there like, it's like Tom Sandoval's, like his playground to be a predator because they don't film Coachella. And that's like his, think about it. He's been doing this for 10 years. Coachella has been like, his safe haven and that's when he like gets to do drugs and just be like oh i'm so grossed out by everything there's a lot that came out let me keep moving okay <laughs> let me get back to this oh i'm thinking that may also maybe schwartz knew longer and that's gonna be the real devastating thing i don't know why in like a weird twisty kind of way <laughs> that's just those are my witchy senses as of right now I cannot elaborate on that. It's just a feeling, guys. All right, and then it says, I had thought that we needed cameras on them right away. Yes, you do, he says, sounding conclusive, and I now think we need a minute. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. I don't know what that means, but that's a big topic right now. Also, don't forget, Ariana went on a press tour last week after she went on, she went on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, obviously, she went on the Today Show, um, and we know she did. Um, shout out to Honda Civic Selfie. Like, I'm obsessed. I need to meet Honda Civic Selfie, I think. This account on Instagram. So good. <laughs> oh, by the way, Australia. This has been something I've been trying to manifest with my podcast, like, long term. I want to... Australia to be the first international live show location for Bravo and Blaze. And I think you guys used to be number two, but you bumped to number four behind the UK and Canada. And I've, I've been to London, so I feel like I don't really need to go there. And Canada is like, I don't, I mean, we can go to Canada too. I love you can Canadians, but I was really like manifesting this, so putting it out there. Um, this is a warning story right here for Instagram folks. I got the ability to reply in comments with gifts, so it's game over. <laughs> Let's get loose. Shout out to Caduce. Oh, Ariana looks so good. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I wanted to take a minute on this. So Face Reality 16 showed um, the clip of Kristen and Ariana together, and I want to mention that I really enjoyed this scene and I think Kristen is in a good place in her life. I also appreciate that she seemed to have she seems to have outgrown Vanderpump rules as she said in her podcast. Don't forget there's side podcast, side content coming in all the time. Um and that she does doesn't seem like she has much interest in going back. Um I like that for her. And However, I do want to take a moment because part of Bravo and Blaze, and I know it, like, 
I don't know, whatever. Part part of Bravo and Blaze is I wanted to make sure I stand up for like what I, my values are, and this is we're watching Kristen Doty come back after being fired after Bravo did a huge BLM campaign, and I'm not focusing on Kristen right now. I'm focusing on like the events that happened to like. Well, why, why isn't she here? Like, why did she get fired? There's no mention of that. And I find that to be in poor taste, not just for me, but like for any of us who watch loyally and who are aware of the situation that happened. And so I think back, the reason it all happened is because that season was during the t during covid and then um george the murder of george george floyd happened and bravo did an entire blm campaign okay and i'm like all for the blm campaign i was like wow this might be a different world on bravo but then when they do stuff like this and like bring kristen back when it's convenient for them and beneficial for them without even addressing what had happened it feels kind of disrespectful in a way or <laughs> like i don't know how to describe it drop some um some of your thoughts in the comments because i know you do fix my life podcast i know you have thoughts on this one so <clears throat> i just want to put that out there because i think it's triggering for people and um not just me, I think for others out there. And like I said, when we start talking about it, we start relating to each other. And then we find out that Sandoval gave not just me for a menstrual cycle since March 3rd, but other women out there as well. And it's not okay. All right, moving on. Segue there. Um, what else? Okay, so <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember. I probably am taking too long already on these stories, but... There was this tweet thread that I saw where it was like a teenage kid who was like saying, oh my gosh, my mom's trying to tell me that I'm tweeting too much and she's taking away my phone. And then the next tweet is like, I'm on the computer or whatever. And then like they kept slowly getting everything taken away to the point the last tweet was from the refrigerator. That's how like hooked this kid was. And Seeing this where they're like, after filming this scene, Raquel turned off her phone and was not seen or heard from for weeks. Um, shout out to Bravo by Gaze who posted this. And I just want to do a side note. I do not wish any harm on Tom Sandoval or Raquel Levis. In fact, I at this, this is Thursday last week. I've been starting, I mean, I said this before last week, but I really, after the finale, I started to feel nervous and like concerned about their well being because, like, this is a lot. And I don't know. I think I said this on last week's episode. The US is one of the only countries that doesn't provide uh, like mental health services or benefits for reality TV stars or whatever. I guess um, in other countries, not only do they give it to you while you're on a show, but they also, like, if you have something happen later on down the road, you can still use those services. Like, why don't we have that here in the U.S.? Anyways, okay, I need to go through this faster. Shout out to I Live for Bravo. Shout out to Bravo While Black. <laughs> Says Tom when he got home and the penis flute was broken. <laughs> Reality comics, too. Definitely follow. Hilarious. Okay, so this, shout out to Bravo Boo. Lala goes live after, she, well, she does, like, watch parties, I guess. I don't know. This is, is this TikTok? Somebody recorded it. I don't know. But she has been going off, yelling at the screen, yelling at Raquel, saying, you idiot, blah, 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 you're so dumb, or whatever. And I just... I don't even I wasn't even paying attention. It was like all barking. And but I what I was thinking of is how the Randall scandal hadn't come out yet. And I'm like, I would be scared if I was in La La's shoes. I wouldn't be around like yelling and like la 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 with <laughs> la la la. Um, because she's just she's about to I told you guys this before. Other accounts have told me they're like ready to lay into her because of all this. 
I'm not saying I condone it, but I can't control people. And this is what I've been told. So I'm nervous for her. It's just wild to me. Bravo while black. Shout out Sheena with her scientific explanation. Um, I live for Bravo. Oh, this is when I started um, spiraling. Oh, yeah. So I started spiraling because the producer got everyone worked up thinking like, what is this big reveal going to be? And, you know, like, when is it going to happen? Who's going to have to, like, who's involved in this? And everyone's throwing out theories. And I, I don't know. Now looking back in hindsight, I wish that I didn't talk about this at all because people started speculating that she's maybe pregnant. And, like, that's a sensitive topic. So, and even Lala said on her podcast, she's like, I'm not even touching that. And that's, like, what everyone was kind of alluding to. And I don't know if <clears throat> there was something that went around back in March when this all first started happening. And I just ignored it because I'm like, I can't even fathom that right now or comprehend it that I don't even want to go there. So, we started spiraling. Oh boy! Shout out to Taste of Reality, your new bra- your new fave Bravo page. Um. Oh yeah, Patient Etherize. Uh, shout out for them catching a screenshot of Raquel actually on social media on March 9th looking at stories. So I find that kind of. And they said after filming the scene, Raquel turned off her phone and was not seen or heard from for weeks. Granted, it could have been someone she works with. I don't know. All right, so now we're on Friday? No, we're on Saturday. I didn't know. So going back to the finale, remember the scene with Tom and Raquel when she's like, he says, they love you. And she goes, I love you too. And it's super awkward and awful. I didn't. I, it wasn't clear. Like, obviously, this is the first time they said I love you on camera in this context. But I wasn't sure because some people were saying, like, no, it's definitely the first time they ever said I love you. And I'm like, who said that and why? So I just did a poll. 56% of people don't believe that this is their first time saying I love you. And that's where I'm at, too. I don't understand the other side, but I'm willing to – I'm open-minded and willing to hear about it um oh andy also went on chicks in the office on their podcast and he was saying that his theory about raquel is that she wanted to be one of the main characters and have like all that attention and wanted to like take ariana's place and if that's the case i just need to make an announcement right now for anyone listening that there is no taking someone's place in a group setting. It's you're only just compete against yourself and worry about yourself and you will do just fine. In fact, you will live a way happier and healthier life. Like I don't just don't do it. <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, shout out to Bravo Boo. Queens of Bravo. Oh, yeah. Um talking about Tom Schwartz. Okay, so Sh- Shayna also had a podcast episode with Danny Pellegrino come out since last week. And um, she thinks that Sandoval definitely hooked up with Billy Lee, which, again, this is all alleged. We don't know for sure. Um, but she thinks the other person is an a former bandmate of Tom Sandoval and the most extras who was there at one point, but then like mysteriously just disappeared with no explanation. Not in like a dateline way, I don't think. Just like she wasn't in the band anymore. Oh my gosh, now I'm spiraling. (laughs) Spiraling real time. True crime is my other love. So I try to keep them separate, but they just keep coming back together. And I blame Tom Sandoval and Randall Emmett. The Randall scandal. So shout out to Rate My Bravo. Okay, so I don't even know how I got here, but I somehow didn't realize that Ariana had a podcast. Or maybe I just remembered that in the moment and was like, let me go search. 
But I found that she has a podcast called Earth to Ariana. And on October 25th, 2022, Tom Sandoval was her guest. And she was doing episodes like on a... um, on a monthly cadence so and then I think December was her last episode and so Tom Sandoval was on wait seven days a week before Halloween and he says first of all he says like he's paying rent for the space that you know he's leasing for his band to practice I'm like this makes no sense at all. And she's like, oh, you are? And I, I don't know if she, like, really was just finding out for the first time, but it's kind of crazy. So then I'm like, okay, this is right before Halloween. He's on her podcast, and they're acting, like, it seems like they're a couple on this podcast. You can go listen to it. Then they start talking about Halloween, and I'm like, why isn't anyone talking about this? Because as I'm listening to the podcast, Ariana's podcast, she specifically asked him about Halloween costumes and how he's a Halloween costume connoisseur. And he also said that one of the most important things as a connoisseur, because she's like, what would you suggest, you know, makes a good Halloween costume? And he says, you have to have something that's authentic. Okay, and let's not forget that Tom Sandoval dressed up as Raquel Levis, his mistress, during his affair on Halloween and they were hanging out all night and there's footage of the entire night on uh, that was on her Instagram stories for a while she did not take anything down but then somebody on her account took everything down except the Halloween reel like they are fucking with us How- like this is insane insanity i'm i'm creeped out this is the creepiest thing ever but go check out my reel on instagram because i put the audio from ariana's podcast where they're talking about the halloween costume and i spread it out <laughs> throughout the the whole halloween instagram story that she had cuz i recorded it it is now down it's no longer on her account, but I recorded it and I queued up the podcast audio. You're welcome. All right. I just, I'm, I can't get over this. I And I'm shocked. They didn't talk about it last night on the reunion part one either. So I'm still like, what is going on with this Halloween costume? Why aren't we talking about this? Um, so on, I'm going back to shenanigans. I don't know why I'm all over the place, but, um, that's just how my brain is, I guess. So on Shana's podcast with Danny Pellegrino, they're talking about, um, Raquel's parents and how they're very like controlling. And this is where I'm like, oh my gosh, are these old time unwed mother to be convents like do those still exist and when I asked that question people were like confirming to me that yes I know because I work at one (laughs) and I don't know this person so maybe maybe they just lied who knows but um I'm like spiraling at this point right also I just need to give a shout out to Peter Panos Housewives and Chit Chat And their podcast, Hot Topics Podcast, I was fortunate enough to be a guest on their podcast that dropped last week. So go check out that episode. Oh, we talked about beepers and stuff because Peter didn't even know what a beeper was. I'm like, what are you talking about? At first, I kind of ignored it because I'm like, no way he doesn't know what a beeper is. And turns out he really didn't know what a beeper was. And then that made me think of like, remember when you would put in like 80085? 
<laughs> your boobs. That's my maturity level. Sorry. So Kristen Dowdy. Kristen Dowdy. Okay. I have to... I have to make a formal apology to Blake from Blonde Hair Black Heart because I know there was a rumor that Tom and Raquel kissed at Coachella last year. That's why I was like, Coachella? That's his, that he's a predator at Coachella. Like, why is Coachella where he lures women in? He did it with Kristen, Ariana, and Raquel. And then their biggest fear was not going to Coachella. But then I thought, so what happened was there were like blind items going around about this. And they at the time when it was going on, this was before the season even was airing. And everyone thought she was making out with Tom Schwartz. And then when Scandival came out, they were like, oh, my God, that must have been, it must have been Tom Sandoval, not Tom Schwartz. And for some reason, I thought, because Blake post reposted this blind and I thought I saw him say like oh this was a joke or something like that and so I like dismissed it in my mind but apparently my apology is for misunderstanding that because he got the blind item and just you know reposted it but shout out to him because it made it made it to um the show because <laughs> they talked about it right and, um, but I, in my mind, I dismissed it as a possibility that like that didn't even happen because I also had an episode with Ryan Bailey recently after Scandival started and he said he was with them at Coachella and there's no way because Tom and Ariana were like, look so great and like in love and happy together and so i'm going off his firsthand experience and like that blind item just disappeared but then kristen said well now we know that they kissed at coachella and i was like wait why do we know that <laughs> and it's because of the blind item i think which also i only take blind items with a grain of salt so it could have been somebody just making it up still unless they admitted to it and that's what i need and now we're hearing from last night's episode that they may have wait do we hear that from the episode or somewhere else but they may have had sex that night they definitely were in the hot tub together and oh my gosh we'll recap that all tomorrow i'm gonna have to watch it again but so yeah new spiral going on pretty much <laughs> yeah see truly spiraling the new information i process may put me over the edge but i must go offline for mom duties yeah so i think i already heard the pregnancy rumors but i didn't want to like post about it like i don't think that's appropriate um but also i'm like i can't like i need to talk about it <laughs> i didn't know what to do um Bravo Snarkside posted the Vanderpump Dog Foundation Annual Gala 2023 was also on, I believe, Thursday night. And you can see Lala was there with James Kennedy, Ali Luber, obviously. They look so good, all of them. Except, I have to say, Schwartz looks like he... He looked like he rolled out of bed. He looked like Randall Emmett on Jackson and Brittany's wedding. The morning of their wedding when everyone's dressed and he's not he's in bed um so yeah this is only relevant because the, we're all spiraling collectively right not just me there's side pockets of people like all spiraling in their own little circles and through the grapevine later on there's like a rumor that there's beef between Lisa, Lala, and Ariana because they unfollowed each other on Instagram. But we didn't, there was no proof that they were actually following them to begin with. So I'm like, also, I don't hold weight to that kind of stuff. So I didn't think anything of it really. But later on, Ariana mentions in a later post on comments by Bravo that 
they weren't even following each other. So it was like no big deal. But for a hot minute, people were worked up over it. <laughs> That's how crazy it is over here on social media. On Instagram specifically and Twitter. They're, they're like pretty in parallel. I feel like TikTok is a different world. Um, shout out to Little Family Van for this James Kennedy Photoshop of the number one guy in the group. It's on Jackson, Brittany, and their kid cruises face or bodies. And I just have to tell a little story because I love Little Family Van. Speaking of Twitter and Instagram, so I really, I, there is a difference between who's on Instagram versus who's on Twitter. And there was a point in time where if you guys remember, everyone was like, Twitter's going away this week <laughs> at midnight. We're all going to lose all our tweets forever. And people were like, what the fuck? And some people were like, good, I hope it's gone forever. And it was just like chaos. And some, there was like a, maybe a handful of my friends over there on Twitter who came over to Instagram because <laughs> in fear that it was really going to go away. And sorry, I don't mean to out you, but I love you, little family. <laughs> <laughs> so good um don't forget michael rapaport is in on this too he's like fully invested he's been posting he posted this can i guess this is a cameo from raquel i couldn't understand what it was i felt a little bad after i my caption because i said i don't know what the fuck this is but i hate it and now looking back i think i was so aggressive because i because Michael Rapaport is kind of like that. And I was like, oh, maybe he'll like it. I think subconsciously I did that. Because afterward, I'm like, why did I do that? I hate myself. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Bravo breaking news. Um, there, there was a sneak peek that came out over the Randall scandal. We're going to get to that. Um, also, you guys, Bravo ratings on Twitter and Ryan Bailey reposted that there, the ratings for the finale episode were 1.885 million viewers, which was a season high. And then Ryan Bailey said, only seven people watched my breakup. And I was like, that's a lot. Right? <laughs> oh, and then Bravo's been dropping through the week. They must have went you know, and asked every cast member before they went on, like, how are you feeling? So they start with Ariana. We get a glimpse of everyone saying how they feel before they go in. Also, I love how Bravo Labs and other non-Bravo celebs are get weighing in on Scandival and Candace from Real Housewives of Potomac. She says, this is a damn soap opera. I'm riddled with unidentified emotion. Like, what in the actual hell? What in the black Jesus? What? LOL. We all need therapy after this. Hashtag pump rules. I've been saying that. So make sure you come over to our Scan of All Trauma bonding group. Um, also, over the week, when Ariana was in New York, there was a Southern Charm, Summer House, Vanderpump Rules hang out in New York City, and there's just a picture here. Love them. Ooh, my top is kind of like Lindsay's. I'm a hub, hub house stand, even though I didn't watch this last season because I just like dropped everything and focused on Scandival. I still, I said it before I left this, left watching the show. I said, I don't really care what happens. All I know is that I'm a Lindsay Hubbard stand. And I stand by that, and I think that I was right <laughs> from what I hear from people um, who've been watching. So this is from Bravo and Booze. I just wanted to also remind everyone that there would be no summer house without Vanderpump Rules. But Southern Charm, like, I feel like they could have stayed separate. They're, I don't like how they're trying to mingle and, like, I mean, we like it, but I don't know. Southern Charm triggers me on, like, beyond. <laughs> um, Us Weekly got James on the red carpet for Vanderpump, the Vanderpump Dog Gala. And 
I thought maybe he already knew what the big surprise was because he looks kind of sad here in this interview. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, maybe maybe the news is that this has been going on since him and Raquel were together before the engagement. Because I started watching season nine back. And in the beginning, Sandoval's like, we got a house. And I don't know, just the way... Ugh, it's weird. And then he's like, you know, we were like brothers. And it just made me feel sad for him. I love James Kennedy. So Bravo OOOMG posted, allegedly Rachel's hiding out in Tucson, Arizona at her grandmother's house because she is pregnant. I don't I don't like to post things like that, like I said before, but now I'm talking about it. And I like, ugh, am I the problem? Probably, I don't know. But once somebody posts it, I feel like I kind of have to address it, right? So I just said, it, I don't know if this is true, but we might as well spiral together. Um, but then I'm like, Grandma? Wait a minute. She's hiding out at Grandma's. Grandma Buttons? No way. <laughs> I just, I started joking around because, you know, like, I like to make jokes when we're going through something dramatic to lighten the mood and i'm like we need to all blame grandma buttons obviously don't do anything to grandma buttons and don't be d or s this is just a joke but how funny <laughs> think oh my god grandma buttons is she's been the real villain this entire time um, yeah, so I'm like spiraling after all this stuff is going on. I went live. Go check out Instagram to see the full live. I went live for over 40 minutes. That's wild. I have, I have so many things to say. It's a Bravo world posted. We need Dodie to do a MacGyver and, and trick a producer into spilling the tea. Okay, so I wanted to remind people that Tom said to Howie that he told Jeremiah the showrunner something to hold himself accountable. And they actually sh like did a flashback on last night's episode. And it was at the um, it was Christina Kelly's product line party. And they have Tom Sandoval saying to Jeremiah, like, oh, we should all be like sharing our real lives or whatever. But then Ariana said that she, when she was on Watch What Happens Live, I think she said that she's close with Jeremiah, the showrunner, and he was just as devastated as her. And that's when I was like, uh-oh, the math ain't mathin. Where's Jeremiah? Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Okay, so now we're on, what day is this? told you guys I'm taking notes here Saturday May 20th oh this is when I was like remember when he said he said this multiple times Tom Sandoval kept saying like you know I can count on one hand how many times Ariana has apologized to me and I'm like does he know what that means or like what is he talking about why does he expect apologies? That made me go back to Winter House and the girl who expects compliments. And I'm like, who raised these people? Why do they expect apologies? And why do they expect compliments? Then we see Tom Sandoval out with like some new chick this week past week and she actually looks like the girl who expects compliments Jess I forgot her last name <sighs> still upset that grandma buttons may have betrayed us all this is a clip of Kristen Chenoweth who is commenting on Scandival and I love what she says in her message she's like really women should be picking each other up lifting each other up and you don't need to put someone else's spark out in order for you to shine. Like, you can all shine. That sounds cheesy, but it's true. Um, Caroline Manzo and Ramona. Page six got them talking about Scandival. Caroline, 
Caroline said he's like, she said despicable maybe. I don't remember the exact words, but she had some passion behind it. Ramona was like, I mean, I'm gonna, I don't know, just, you know, Ramona is. So it's a Bravo world. Lala went live again. And this is after she watched a part one of the reunion. And she kept saying, I watch this over and over again. And it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And I got, now that I watched it, I feel like she kind of hyped it a little bit. Like, it was definitely good. But I also don't want to hear her saying how good it was for some reason. Because, like, she's on it. <laughs> I don't want, right? Like, it's not the same. Whatever. Oh, my gosh. And then uh, this whole weekend, I'm blaming Tom Sandoval for everything, but my family got a bug or something, and both my husband and I got sick. So I was just laying in bed all weekend. Um, for those of you who sat through Selling Sunset, kudos to you. I couldn't get into it. And I've watched, like, every season, but I was barely hang hanging on by a thread in the last – season so I just kind of I started it but then I took a nap um James Kennedy at Tiffany's you took your first steps at Tiffany's um Queens of Bravo has some clips of James Kennedy dragging Sandoval Schwartz and Raquel I love that um this is what I already mentioned our uh comments by Bravo Reposted Ariana saying neither of us followed each other in regards to Lisa, Lala, and Ariana all unfollowing each other, whatever. Like, people just, we all are on edge, pretty much. <laughs> e! News posted this video of James Kennedy. Don't forget, he's also touring and doing his DJ gigs, and his shows look legit. I personally could never go in there, because, like, that's not, I can't do it. Like, I don't, like. I like my space. And, but he looks like he's killing it. He's got no shirt on. He's pouring drinks down people's throats. They got lights. I love it. I love it. James Kennedy. He's, they share what he, he thought or his feelings before the reunion. Okay, I wanted to take a minute on this. This is not Bravo specific. However... It's on Netflix. It's on that show Explained. And there was one episode about apologies. And I decided to watch it because I'm like, ooh, let me hear what they say. Because, you know, Tom Sandoval seems to be obsessed with people owing him apologies or expecting them. So, you know, let me get into it. And I even took notes on this in my Scandoval notebook. For you to die. Okay, so in this Netflix special, they say that there's seven pieces to an apology. One, you need to express remorse. Two, you need to acknowledge the harm. Three, take responsibility. Four, offer an explanation. I don't know if, like, I love that one, but whatever. Five, <laughs> offer repair. Like, how do we fix this? Six, commitment to change. Seven, requests forgiveness. I thought that was, so they, in this show, I highly recommend, go watch it on Netflix. They go through this real quick. I think uh, Kiki Palmer, is that her name? I think she does the narration of it. But I just like it because they go through each step and they're talking about, for expressing remorse, it's really important that you have a sincere apology and you show like how really truly apologetic you are right wait I'm gonna skip over this because she says like things you shouldn't do and I'm like oh my god this is Tom Sandoval she says the biggest mistake that people make when apologize apologizing is to inter interweave little defense components in there that help them save face that help them protect their self-image then they show as an example like Kathy Griffin gave some apology and she's like, I sincerely apologize, but I'm a comedian. I cross the line. She rolls her eyes and they're like, that's not a good thing to do. And then another example, they're like, or sounding too remorseful. This girl, she's 
sobbing. I hope that one day you guys can forgive me, can see the woman that I am. Focusing on yourself. <laughs> they said, don't do that. Um, I'm dying because Kiki goes, Laura Lee later apologized for her apology. <laughs> this is Tom Sandoval, guys. This is totally Tom Sandoval. Then they said, um, when you take responsibility, make sure you take responsibility because they gave Ja Rule as an example when he tweeted after the fire Festival. And don't forget, he was like, he said something like, I, this is not my fault. And you know who kept saying that last night on the reunion part one is Tom Schwartz. I, I heard it. I was like, oh boy, oh boy. They also show, um, what's this guy's name? Ted Cruz, is that his name? <laughs> wrong, whatever. The guy from Texas, when he went on vacation, when his whole state in Texas was like freezing or whatever. Yeah, Ted Cruz. He's like, I didn't want all this screaming and yelling about this trip. So he's like deflecting to distract even one minute from the real issues pivoting that I think Texans care about. There, there's something, I don't know about this Joe Biden one. Um, the jaw roll one though cracked me up. We are working right now on getting everyone off the, of off the island safe. That is my immediate concern. I will make a statement soon. I'm heartbroken at this moment. My partners and I wanted this to be an amazing event. It was not a scam as everyone is reporting. I don't know how everything went so left, but I'm working to make it right by making sure everyone is refunded. I truly apologize as this is not my fault. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, then this expert is saying, sometimes we feel like we're the ones who deserve an apology from the other person. And then Palmer says, which is why some experts say a good apology shouldn't be a performance at all, but really a conversation. You know who likes performances? Tom Sandoval. Um, and then this expert is talking about how, you know, like the opposite of trauma is not help. The opposite of trauma is power. And I thought that was really interesting because it does seem like Tom has an issue with like being in in control of the narrative and how he's perceived and like what I don't know just how the story goes and like he's all flashy and you know like I don't know I just thought that was interesting I I think there may be some trauma there um I'm gonna skip over that and then towards the end they're like there's a good chance you owe one that you're ready to give, talking about apologies, um, because they're more than just boxes you can check. I would like to encourage people to consider an action that allows you to take control of your fate in your own way. It's a pretty courageous thing to do. Talking about people issuing proper apologies. Um... Then um, this Healing Humanity 777 account is like a licensed trauma therapist or something. And he goes through the five signs of trauma bonding. And then I was like, oh my gosh, is this, what is happening with Tom and Raquel? Are they trauma bonding? And 69% of people think that they are. I don't know if they are. Um, shout out to the Bravo babe. She did an amazing job investigating um, Tom Sandoval's girl, new girlfriend or whatever. I don't know if you can say girlfriend. He said, oh, guys, we're just friends. And this totally looks like Jess, the girl who expects compliments. But she um, got all the news there, and then it somehow got to, like, page six. So shout out to the Bravo babe. Love Reza getting in on the action on, in Us Weekly. Um, I had to watch Dateline to snap out a scan of all. Shout out to Ether Opal. Her Barbie videos are so funny. Um, my kid is so ruthless in making fun of me. Like, 
Just have a kid if you need to be humbled. Actually, Tom Sandoval should be having a kid. No, just kidding. Um, but she said, we were watching Pitch Perfect together, and she's like, Fat Amy comes on, and she's like, that's you. Or whatever. And I was like, what? But she goes, and I just tweeted, like, my kid just told me I'm like Fat Amy from Pitch Perfect. But she goes, no, like, your sense of humor. And I thought that was sweet. <laughs> Um, if you guys need a break from Scandaval for a minute, go check out Bupkiss on Peacock because that's pretty good. Um, let's see. Ali Luber. They look so good in this picture at the Vanderpump Dog Gala. Love them. Shout out to Cece Loves You. She's got um, an old video. Like Chris, it's a pitch perfect. So this is more proof of that I'm a witch. I'm watching Pitch Perfect. And then I'm scrolling and I see this flashback video of Vanderpump Rules and Pitch Perfect doing like a Christmas <laughs> commercial or something. And then it also made me think like, oh my gosh, remember they did one with Seth Rogen too? Real Housemates of New York uh, posted, who else forgot that Sheree wrote a book? I was so confused about this because on my Amazon store, I have a whole idea list of Bravo Lab books and I came across the Sheree Whitfield one I was like is this hers but the, it says from the Real Housewives of Atlanta so I was like okay so there's a link if you guys are interested uh shout out to Socialite Gossip and Aldo he said um I think they mentioned how I said we deserve Tom Sandoval and Raquel to come back <laughs> next season I'm very curious to see what they do, if they're going to split it up or whatever. Um, I was playing with Snapchat, and this filter totally made me look like Kelly Dodd, I feel like. Just had to throw that out there. Kim cries herself to sleep. Kim Kardashian was on Extra TV, like, same girl. Um, weird that she does, though. Also, I revived my Etsy shop. All the same merch that's available on, well, majority of, all the merch that's available on bravoandblaze.com, you can also find it on Etsy. And I'm going to be wearing my Diabolical Demented Subhuman track pants to the watch party in New York City on June 7th for the Reunion Part 3 watch party. And I have to say, I'm scared. I am, like, so nervous to be around other people while I watch Vanderpump Rules. And it's going to be like the most important episode. Usually I'm like making content and taking notes. Like I'm going to be in a bar filled with people. Uh, don't forget Johnny Lowe is a VPR fan. It's my VPR bestie, but he doesn't know it. Uh, Taste of Reality has a blind where it says, Anon, please, I've never sent anything in, so I don't know if I'm doing this right. I have pictures and videos, but I'm not sure how to add them to this message thread. I have a source that lives in Austin, Texas, and he sent me a video and picture of Tom Sandoval in his apartment building working out. The source ha told me that he has been seen walking in and out of the complex with a tiny blonde woman, and he has been there a week or so. I also have a video of him walking to the elevator. Damn, this person is on top of it. The source wasn't aware of who he was and was in the gym working out next to him. Source started up a casual convo asking if he is new to Austin, etc. And he told him, no, I'm visiting a girl I'm dating. I'm from L.A. All the crazy women drove me out of there. <laughs> I don't know if this is true. But it's funny. This picture. Oh, my gosh. Um, the Bravo Babe, again, has more info on Tom and his new girl. Katie, the clip of Katie is up. Socialite Gossip um, also posted something from this girl on YouTube. I guess she deactivated all of her social media. But, uh... I just kept wondering, like, if he is in a relationship already, can he just stop? Like, why does he, why does he, he's been in, like, multiple overlapping relationships for decades, and I just don't get it. Um, check out Byway Hello Drama. There's a clip from this psychologist who reacts to the finale of Vanderpump Rules, 
And I loved everything he was saying, except I didn't love the James Kennedy slander. He was like, was, why is this guy crying? He was making fun of him crying. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's kind of mean. Don't you think? Oh, my gosh. Anyways. Um, what is this one? By way, hello, drama. Andy was on TMZ. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So shout out to Poppy of Pop. Jax tweeted, what day was this? On the 21st? Oh, that, that same day. He said, big news is coming. Hope y'all are having a great Sunday. Like, he's trying. Does he do this all the time? Because somebody, I was like, what the hell does this mean? And somebody was like, he always posts that he has an announcement. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, Bravo, babe. This was at Equinox in Austin the night of the finale last week. Ooh. So he watched the finale with a new girl in Austin. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so Monday morning, Goodbye Glam Squad has this lawyer talking about um, the Randall scandal documentary that came out on Hulu. And he says, because I guess Randall was saying that he was going to sue for defamation or something. And when I watched the clip, the lawyer was saying like, it's going to be really, really hard for Randall Emmett to, to be able to win a defamation or even prove a defamation case. And basically, media outlets, because it's a documentary, media outlets have like an extra layer of, you know, not protection. I don't want to say protection, but like, if that's if you're a, like a publication and you're reporting on things and and you're getting firsthand interviews from people there i don't think there's anything wrong with that um but then in a documentary you also whoever produces it could sway it in one dire one direction i watched it i mean i read the first 14 pages of the la times article and i learned like, I was more horrified by reading the first 14 pages of the L.A. Times article than watching the Randall scandal. But, um, yeah, so I don't, I don't think Randall will be able to sue either. Um, Bravo, O-O-O-M-G, or no, Bravo, O-O-O-M-G, there's three O's, whatever. Um, posted Billy Lee taking care of the dog. I don't think Ariana is mad at Billy Lee, even though she unfollowed her. And again, that's why I'm like, I don't know if I care about, I don't know if that holds any weight when people follow or unfollow. So yeah, I misunderstood. I didn't realize that the Randall scandal came out on Monday. So I watched it and oh my God, one of the interviews from one of his assistants was like the first day I met Randall he was like he had no clothes on and he was getting an IV because he was coming back from Coachella or something I don't know it was like pretty nuts my first day oh he had to fill up the Rolls Royce oh his his assistants had to use their own money to pay for expenses to do stuff for Randall and he one of his assistants is all his credit cards are maxed out and he's just like working on paying it off. Just sucks. Uh, the Bravo babe got this picture. Are you single? This is Tom's alleged new girl. And that's just kind of cringy. No matter who, I don't know, just having that. Are you single? <laughs> um, in the Randall scandal, they also talked about the, physical altercation that Lala and Randall got into and I guess she admitted to like throwing or scratching him and throwing a child's stool at him and that image kind of made me laugh but uh go check out the Bravo babe she did a whole thing on Carly um so then I think we're on to wait this is Monday still Ariana posts on her stories, ready to dip out. She's got finance boxes. I'm like so dumb, right? I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, I hope this means she – Okay, so I wanted her to buy Tom out so that 
he would be forced to leave. But then people were like, no, she's got to get out of there because, you know, it has bad energy. And, you know, and I was like, that's true. So, but then I was like, but I'm, I'm petty like that. <laughs> like, I feel like I would prefer her to just, like, I would want him to have to physically leave. But I know, like, I also feel she should get out of there just for mental health health purposes I wouldn't want to be there either unless you like tore it down and like <laughs> rebuilt it or something but everyone's like what ready to dip out and we thought she was moving turns out she's not so I know I believe um I'm team Croy in this Croy versus Kim Zolciak thing um okay so here's a thing about Yelp and this is from so bad it's good with Ryan Bailey I guess um I, again, I don't know what the like what he sent them, but this is what Yelp responded with. It says Yelp spokesman answers our questions about Schwartz and Sandys. Schwartz and Sandys, how you, how Yelp responded to Scandal? Hi Ryan, after watching one of the greatest episodes in TV history, the season finale of Vanderpump Rules, I saw your tweet about Schwartz mentioning that the Yelp reviews for Schwartz and Sandys took a hit. In case it's helpful for any future podcast episodes, I wanted to share a few stats on how Scandival has played out on Yelp. Yelp has placed an unusual activity alert over the Yelp reviews of Schwartz and Sandy since Saturday, March 4th, 2023. Wait, something's like, oh, it's just a watermark. When a business gains public attention and sees an influx of Yelp reviews, we may place this alert on the Yelp page and temporarily disable the ability to post reviews. At Yelp, all reviews must be based on genuine first-hand consumer experiences, even if we may agree with the points expressed, hashtag Team Ariana. These attempts to artificially inflate or deflate a business's star rating can mislead other consumers and hurt a business's staff who aren't part of the situation. You can learn more about our Consumer Alerts program here. User views for Schwartz and Sandy's Yelp page increased more than 570% in March compared to the month prior. The news broke on March 3rd. TomTom's Yelp page also saw a 785% increase in user views for the same time period. If it's of interest, we can also follow up with how the season finale impacted businesses' user views on Yelp. Before temporarily disabling the ability to post reviews on March 4th, there were already more than 140 reviews posted to Shorts and Sandy's Yelp page prior to our moderators placing an unusual activity alert. Once activity on the business page stops or dramatically decreases, our, moder our moderators will remove the alert, clean up the reviews, and allow users to post again. Wow. Hi, Ryan. I don't know what this is. Hi, Ryan. For sure. Our data shows that between... Oh, maybe this is like the beginning of the an email or something. Hi, Ryan. For sure. Our data shows that between Tuesday, May 16th and Wednesday, May 17th, when the finale aired to 1.9 million viewers, Schwartz and Sandy's Yelp page has seen a whopping 1,136% spike in user views, and TomTom Tom also saw a 1,000... 17% increase. By comparison, Schwartz and Sandy's only saw a 255% increase in user views after last week's episode, Tuesday, May 9th versus Wednesday, May 10th. Tom Schwartz and the 20 employees of Schwartz and Sandy's can relax knowing that Yelp's moderators will clean up their Yelp page and remove the unusual activity alert once activity goes down. But we can't speak to the hundreds of negative Google reviews they've received. Looking forward to the next episode. Let me know if you have any questions. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Good job, everyone. Go Ryan Bailey. That is hilarious. Those numbers. Oh, <sighs> OK. So it's a Bravo World posted. Sandoval has been seen in the international terminal of LAX. And I don't know if this is true. I don't know who sent. I don't even know who sent this to me. Someone said he was spotted going to Ukraine. I'm like, what? That could be totally made up. So Call Her Daddy also um, is getting in on Scandival and posted a cryptic Scandival post. And I did a poll. Who do you guys think it'll be? And 76% thought Ariana. 9% thought Tom Scandival. 
15% thought Raquel. Bravo in the city. What's up? Call her daddy. So then call her daddy still posting more stuff, you know, up to their scandal episode. Excuse me. Um, then to follow up on Ariana's first story where she posted that, you know, we all thought she was moving out. She said, OK, here's the deal. I'm not moving out. I'm moving up and I'm getting my finances in order or something. And then I didn't even realize she had a SoFi um, logo on her sweatshirt. <laughs> I was like, what does it mean? And everyone's like, uh, Avi. I was like, oh, I didn't even notice. Um, and then the Bravo Babe posted, got a picture of Ariana going to call her daddies for the podcast. So now we know, you know, that's how they hype it up. Also, Socialite Gossip reposted some, I don't know where this interview came from, but Lala talks about how rude Randall was after she gave birth. And also what annoyed me was that he got his own room in the hospital because he wanted to get a hotel room, but they were like, no, she's in active labor. Like, you have to be here. And he's like, oh, well, then can I get another, can I just pay for a room for myself? So he got one and had his assistant bring him, like, sheets, NyQuil, and Fireball while, he w while Lala was in labor. This guy. Awful, awful. No filter with Zach. Shout out. <clears throat> Graceless Bravo has um, clips from Sandoval's acting <laughs> in a Lifetime movie. If he was such a good actor, he wouldn't be on Vanderpump fucking rules. Born to be, or born fucking cool. Sorry. This is up. Oh, there's that red lamp. Look, my skin is getting better. Travis Barker. Cat, Bravo by Catherine. Um... Oh, if you're a um, if you're in the Scandal trauma bonding group, I have moved over the audio. If you're just an audio podcast listener, so you can go check that out. Page six picked up the Bravo Babe story. They captured it all. <laughs> Bravo Snark side exclusive. Who's this to? Is this page six or TM? Oh, TMZ. Tom Sandoval calls BS on reports he's dating Carly Hale. We're just friends. And I was like, I can totally hear him being like, boys, we're just friends. Stop filming me. Stop filming me. Okay, so also what happened this week, um, shout out to Rate My Bravo. I'm going to read their recap because I listened. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get to it, so I reposted this. Also, I support others. Um, one, Charlie on, Charlie Burnett on The Vile Files. One, Charlie and Raquel had a falling out mid-season before Scandal because Charlie felt like the show was getting to Raquel's head. Two, Charlie and Raquel have known each other since they were 15 doing pageants together. That one I thought was new info. Three, Charlie is surprised by Raquel's family's response to this. Oh, yeah, she was like, oh, I know Mrs. Levis, and she's a great woman. And then I was talking to somebody else later, and they're like, really? Wasn't she making inappropriate comments to Peter at the puppy party? And I was like, did she? I got to go watch that back. Um, and now James is saying that, like, somebody was talking about his dick size. Was it her? Also, I really did not love how Raquel's dad was pissed over James's hiking boots. That seems like something else is going on. But anyways, number four, both Charlie and journalist Kate Arthur said Raquel's family hates Tom. And according to Charlie, Raquel's mom said she won't be doing any of it anymore. I don't know what that means. Number five, Charlie quit the show at one point due to anxiety. That's why she wasn't in a lot of things or at the reunion. Six, the lightning bolt necklace purchase was organic in Charlie's mind. Said they had been trying on lots of different jewelry items before the necklace. Seven, doesn't know what is going to come out at the reunion, but thinks more people knew and she will be disappointed. 
Number eight, Alex Baskin, the executive producer, said something comes out during the last episode of the reunion that no one knows about, and he isn't sure it is possible to go directly back into filming as planned after the info comes to light. I'm going to be at the watch party when this info comes out, and I'm very, very nervous. <laughs> I know what Joe says. Rate my Bravo. Uh, Kristen was a guest on Jackson Brittany's podcast. Hold on, let me go to this. Kristen was a guest on Jackson Brittany's podcast where they said that Tom got mad at Ariana the night he slept with Raquel for not answering or opening the door for him immediately after banging her best friend outside her window while she slept. Wow. Gross, gross. Lisa Myers. Um, so then I did listen to Charlie on the Vile Files, and um, she talks about how Donald Trump says very blatantly that if you don't have a symmetrical face, then you're not considered beautiful. And I just kept thinking, like, oh, my God, is this why Raquel was so obsessed with her nose? And is this why she was, like, okay with her friends taking Feet pictures? Like, what is that? Um, Bravo by Gaze posted she's not pregnant. L yeah, I don't even want to speculate about that stuff. Shout out to Frankie Smoke. Love her. Um, yep, look. I'm on my fourth menstrual cycle since Scandival started. And I blame Tom Sandoval. Also, over in Australia, TMZ got this footage of a jilted wife running over her husband and his mistress. Has just, has just been released. Um, I When I saw that, I was like, I guess Tom and Raquel are lucky. I do not condone violence, but, you know, could have been worse, I guess. Um, okay, so this was crazy. This part in the Vile Files. Charlie said on Nick Vile's podcast that she heard about a girl signing an NDA to fuck Tom Sandoval. Public service announcement. Do not have sexual relations with anyone who makes you sign an NDA. Okay? That is so crazy. Um, watch of AM. I don't know what that is. Um, this guy does, like, songs to each Vanderpump Rules episode. Um, Lala says she's triggered before the reunion. Um, also, page six. Ugh. Randall Emmett allegedly told Lala Kent she looked like she was part of an exorcism while she was in labor with their daughter. What a jerk, this guy. Um, let's see. Ariana is definitely going to be on Call Her Daddy. Um, in this clip, what does she say? Oh, they that one night he was sleep went to bed with Ariana, snuck out had sex with Raquel, and then got back into bed with her one night. Gross. So gross. Can't wait to wear my pants and show you guys. All right, here we are. So I listened to Call Her Daddy yesterday while I was doing my red light therapy. It reduces inflammation, acne, and possibly the hatred for Tom Sandoval. Didn't really work for that, but... Okay, so as I'm listening, Tom and Ariana started therapy after his affair with Raquel started. And there was a session where the therapist asked if they were going to break up, and he, he said no. WTF. He's such a weasel. Um, this next tweet, I was, like, being facetious. Um, facetious? I think I said it right. Tom cheated on his mistress with his girlfriend in January multiple times. Okay, obviously you can't cheat on your mistress with your girlfriend. That was me trying to make a joke. But she said that they were intimate in January multiple times. Wow, 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 wow. Tom also took Raquel to his hometown of St. Louis more than one time. What does Mickey Rourke hands think about this? That's what I need to know. Also, apparently Graham is a dick. He bit Ariana and he's not very well trained. Whose fault is that? Back at him. 
Rigel. Also, oh my gosh. Call Her Daddy was two hours long, by the way. And I listened to it at the normal speed. So I took the full two hours. Because I was like, no, I, this one deserves my attention. Like, full. So um, Raquel was in Tom's hotel. Or in... Raquel was in Tom's hotel room during his Watch What Happens Live appearance on February 8th, 2023. That's when Schwartz was putting his hand in his mouth and was really nervous about answering things because he knew the whole time that she was in his hotel room. And also, this is a very Randall Emmett thing to do. I guess he, Tom would have p other people use their credit cards or use their names for hotel rooms so that he could, like, sneak around Raquel. Randall would do the same thing, and the assistants were the ones who said it. They admitted it. They said he would ask the assistants to put, like, the hotel room for girls under their names or, like, you know, just, ugh. And... Tom Sandoval is just like Randall. I'm sorry, but they're doing the same sneaky stuff. And he stole, basically stole that money from his mom. <sighs> Don't forget, if you're going to BravoCon, make sure you get your fresh tag 419. And I have a code for 10% off, so make sure you use that too. Okay. So face reality 16... Always with the good videos, <laughs> good reels, and it is Vanderpump and Day. And this is Ariana on Watch What Happens Live, walking down. I posted it twice because I liked it that much. Then we have more new pictures of Ariana. See, this is like good strategic planning as far as her posting. Wednesday is Vanderpump Rules Day. Post on Vanderpump Rules Day. Also, Lala, this is a clip from Rate My Bravo. Lala dropped a podcast episode too, so I had to go listen to that. And in the title, she says Flubber. I thought it, she was referring to Randall as Flubber. <laughs> but in this episode... She hadn't watched the Randall scandal yet, so we still have to wait for that to drop to get into that. And I don't know how deep I can get into with Ran the Randall scandal because that's like a whole other project, but feel free. There's lots of content out there. Um, Lala addresses the Randall document documentary and says, what's yet to be exposed is enough to make you physically ill. Ooh. Then a sneak peek of the reunion came out yesterday. I was getting so nervous. Um, I also posted everything that I'm going through with you guys. All the things that happened. The Variety article. Ariana on the Today Show. Lala's IG Live. Andy on Tricks in the Office. You can see I took notes. I went through everything because I wanted to be prepared. And I was like, I don't know if I can get through everything in just one day. So that's why we're going to go live again tomorrow. All right, I'm going to keep going. Love Andy C, shout out. Um, Bravo Andy posts a picture, smart move. Then they waited for Sandoval to do the right before the reunion, how are you feeling scene or whatever. And I don't know what he said. He's like, I couldn't even, I didn't even pay attention, pay attention to his words. I'm just like, he looks so crazy and scary. Shout out to say S. I think it's Sarah. <laughs> S. Jerla. Sarah. Whoops. And her um, diabolical, demented, subhuman pants. Can't wait to wear mine. Chloe is crazy and Shardy Party 69 from SNL. They did a little skit and I have to say, I may have witched that because when Molly Shannon, when Shannon was on Watch Rapids Live, I said, SNL needs to do a whole Vanderpump Rules skit, but we have the writer's strike, so that's not happening. But they did one for us. So go check it out. Read my Bravo. This is so funny because on Call Her Daddy, Ariana talks about how everything went down when she found out and how, like, they got an Uber. And, like, at one point, they stopped to get 
because Tom wanted to get cigarettes or something. And she goes to the Uber driver. She's like, are you hearing this? <laughs> Read my Bravo was the Uber driver thinking about what he just heard witness saw after he drove Tom and Ariana home the night Scandal broke. And it's a picture of the rock in a car. <laughs> I'm dying to know, too. Oh, my gosh. Bravo love, baby. Ariana looks so good here. Oh, love it. Okay, so Bravo Breaking News posts, the fact that Rachel is hiding in the hotel room during this Watch What Happens Live appearance. Don't forget, I rewatched all of the Watch What Happens Live episodes like two weekends ago, and this is also the same episode when Sandoval said he could defend Schwartz for throwing a drink on Stassi on her birthday. That says a lot about him. Also, Schwartz defended Sandoval for spending money on Raquel's proposal. <laughs> what? Also, they were asked... um, you know, regarding Lala and Randall, you know, should she have been smarter or something, knowing that, you know, how she got him would be how she lost him. And Sandoval said agree, which is basically saying to Raquel, you're going to lose me the same way. So cold hearted, like Paul Abdul would say. He's a cold on a snake. Look in you is I a worm. We should change it to worm. He's a cold on a worm. Something with a mustache. We'll add that in. Um, also, don't forget the reunion, the three-part reunion. There is a uncensored, pumped-up edition on Peacock that airs 6 a.m. the following day. I learned this like late last night. So now that I know I can better plan for next week, maybe I can fit one, you know, just do one episode next week. But um, I did a poll. Will they mention the Halloween costume during, during the reunion? 71% of you said yes. Well, we didn't get anything yet. Um, also 84% of you, 84% of you said you're in for a flash mob at BravoCon, so we need to start working on that. I'm right on top of that, Rose. Okay, this is when I just start scrolling through everything, so yes, I think, oh look, look at this old school tweet, old school, this is five days after Scandal broke on March 8th. My level of petty is peaking. I want Coachella to officially declare a lifelong ban of Tom Sandoval from attending. I think it's still valid. If anything, I think we got more proof that there should be a life ban. Look, more proof. March 3rd, the day Scandoval broke. I literally just got my period and I fully blame it on Tom and Raquel. Four times is March 3rd, guys. It hasn't even been three months. What is happening? I need to talk to Jeremiah. I know that. Still waiting for Seth Rogen to get back to us on what he thinks about Scandival. All right. Let's go to the comments. <laughs> hey, what's up, cheer girl? Love you. Hi, Fix My Life podcast. Hello, Serafina. Yeah, he did spike my cycle. What's that all about? Three more weeks, it feels eternal. Fix my life. I keep telling myself, three more weeks and we are done. I don't understand how no one is saying they have been having an affair since season nine. Look at them at Lala Makeup and Reunion and Rachella. Too many signs. Um... It's strange how Rachel is no emotions, just laughing, smirking. It's weird. She is strange. <laughs> I mean, I agree. All right. Well, that's it for today. We're going to cover the full, uncensored, pumped-up edition of The Reunion Part 1. Oh, wait. We didn't go over ne Never Before Scenes. Hold on. What time is it? 
No, I gotta go. <laughs> All right, we'll do the never before scenes from last week or for the finale. There's only like three short clips, I think. Um, we're gonna cover the full uncensored, pumped up edition of the reunion part one tomorrow morning on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook Live. The audio podcast will be available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thank you all for joining. Make sure you follow, subscribe, turn on notifications so you can be updated when we go live for Bravo and Blaze. Again, subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, and leaving a five-star rating is incredibly appreciated. Oops, I saw this. I got my hair. <laughs> all right, let me fix this. But I love you all. Stay lit, fam.